Okay, so last time I almost derived this, correct? I, I motivated it, showed how some of the terms appear, and most everything else is just routine calculation. So this is the force per unit volume. Okay, so we'll just leave it up there for the moment. And then we're gonna just out of the hat pull a quantity. It's a tensor, but you're already familiar with what it is. Uh, we, we won't particularly have to worry about its tensor-like properties and whatnot. Uh, it's a multi-index object. That's all it is for us. But there are more to tensors. And it, it's no more complicated than vectors. So this is the Maxwell stress tensor. It has two components. Okay. So again, I j, whatever it is, uh, goes from 1, 2, 3. So 1 corresponds to the uh, subscript x, 2 corresponds to the subscript y, and 3 corresponds to... Uh, so for example, uh, t, 2, 3 really means the t, y, z component. Yeah? It's easier to write it this way. And it's this quantity. That's e i e j minus one half delta i j e squared. Plus, and what you will find at the moment at least. Things. What is delta ij? It's a conical delta. It's equal to 1. When i is equal to j, it's 0 otherwise. Um, one thing you'll notice is this expression is mathematically symmetric between e and b. So is this expression. Yeah? OK. Because for every e expression, there's a corresponding B expression. Uh, of course, it, it's, it's only an analogy in the sense for E, the epsilon naught is in the numerator. For B, it's in the denominator. But that's a familiar story. Yep, fine. This one is called, very appropriately, well, maybe not a joke, the Maxwell stress tensor. Okay, and my so let's just get a feel for it. What I want to do is, uh, you know, just go through how to calculate some of the terms. Um, let, let us compute, for example, T Z Z, if we wanted. All right. So then I would get this to be epsilon naught. They're both, this corresponds to i and j being 3. So it is easy, easy, or easy squared, minus 1 half i equals 3, j equals 3, so it's 1, e squared, which I'm going to write as ex squared plus ey squared plus ez squared. Same thing, right? Plus 1 over mu naught bz squared minus 1 half bx squared plus by squared plus bz squared. So what we're doing is just stating one quantity and just calculating what the terms look like. I can simplify this. Well, not much, but if I do this and this, I get E z squared over 2. You'll see every term will have a 1 half, so I'm bringing this out. Minus E x squared plus E y squared. 
same thing with B. I would get 2B0, Bz squared minus Bx squared plus Bby squared. That's how you compute a ZZ term or an XX term or a YY term. What about a cross term? Well, let's just compute T, Y, Z. It's much easier because this term won't appear. So I get epsilon naught, E, Y, E, Z, plus 1 over mu naught, B, Y, E, Z. So it's a matrix, if you will. You know, when you study tensors for a while, you don't necessarily think of it as ma matrices, but they have a matrix representation. So as long as you have only two indices, once you have three and four and five and six indices, then, well, you can't really visualize them like matrices, but perhaps multi-dimensional objects. All right, so we still don't know what to do with it. Um, but I know what we can do with it. I can take dot products with the vectors on both sides. For example, I can do a vector. I'll take a vector A, and I can dot it with this T. It's T has got two indices. So here's the funky notation. And this is really only because it's an introductory course. This is not used very extensively. Well, what that means is you take the first index and you sum them. So you take the dot product only on the first side. And then this is, a, this is not a sum index, correct? This j is not sum. So really, the jth component of this object is that. I can take the dot product on the other side. T dot A. I and J is completely arbitrary. Your book does it differently. I mean, just notation. But it shouldn't matter. You can see what's going on. In our case, it's three. Again, if there's nothing precluding from defining mathematically n-dimensional vector spaces. I can even take the gradient and the divergence, just like you would take normal objects. OK. So gosh, lack of uh, space, huh? I'm going to begin by only, I'm going to retain this for a while. And any questions outside of why? That's a fair question. Well, we'll get there. And, and it's really algebra I'm doing. So let me try to compactify what it is that I'm trying to show. This guy, F. See, after we derived F, we just stated this. So obviously, these things are related. It is divergence of the tensor. minus u0 epsilon naught ds there's nothing to prove with this last term because this over mu0 is s 
So that's just copied over there. So basically, this term should be equal to the divergence of this term. Okay, so let me do this uh, component by component. So let's, let me do begin by divergence. Any questions, by the way? So, you know, now at least we have answered part of the question, which is why. Now, what you want to do is ask questions to make sure you understand what, what, what are these terms? These are new to us. This is a new object. I have to clarify, but I just thought I'd clarify actually in writing it down. Chip, any questions? What did you just say about that See, uh, uh, if you, if you, I'm, I'm going to erase this. S is equal to 1 over mu 0 e cross b. Right? So e cross b is just so there's already an epsilon naught. So I get epsilon naught, mu naught. Yeah. So I just don't have to worry about, and I won't. And what I'll do is I'll show that this is true uh, to the divergence for the x component, and then similar arguments for y and z component. I just don't want to write it three times. There's no subterfuge here. Occasionally, there's subterfuge in the E and M. But when there's subterfuge in the E and M, it's a subtle point, not the obvious one. OK, so what does that mean? It means partial with respect to x. I'm taking dot product from the left-hand side, t x x plus partial with respect to y, t y x plus partial with respect to z, t, z, x. Are we good? That's what it means. Because the gradient is on the left-hand side, they agree with the left-hand side. Yeah? That's the gradient part. And the other part is the x component. And that's the reason they are all, maybe I should do it over here. Ooh, I don't mean to. That's why they're all x. If this was the y component, all these three guys would be y's. Yeah? Okay. So, I'm going to look at this, and I'm going to pull out an epsilon naught. And Txx, we just computed Txx, so it is, it is ex squared, right? Which we promptly erased. Oh, no, we just, we computed zz. It's the same thing as xx. So, it is d dx of e z squared minus d d x of no x x squared e y squared plus e z squared plus magnetic terms. When I say magnetic terms, same thing with these. E is replaced with B. Correct? But also, I should be, that's, that's not entirely true. So then let me do this. Sorry, my, my apologies. But you, you can tell by the derivatives, d, d, y, this is e, y, e, x, plus d, d, z, e, z, e, x, plus, 
magnetic torus. Right? The corresponding magnetic term. But really, our goal is to get the E's to match out, and then the B should match out because of symmetry. OK? Yeah, there is one half. You're right. Yeah, yeah. The one, the one half just goes away in the next step. Yeah. So what happens now is this is epsilon naught 2 times ex times the partial of ex, so that 2 goes away. And for everything, it's squared, so uh, 2 to my goal, well, except for maybe these guys. But that 2 wouldn't be a positive, it's only to the first one, to the, to the squared term. Uh, that's right. And so what we should do, good catch. Yeah? So I get ex minus ey minus ez. Am I good? Are we good? So I computed the x component. I know there's a magnetic term. Now what I'm going to do is compute the x component of this guy. Yeah? Epsilon naught. I take the divergence of E and multiply it by EX. So I get EX, DX, EX, plus EX, DY, E1, plus EX, DZ, EZ. Then I have this term. E dot gradient acting on EX. So then I have EX partial with respect to X of EX plus EY partial with respect to Y on EX plus EZ partial with respect to Z on EX minus epsilon naught mu naught ddt of e cross b, but the x component of that. This is something we won't worry about, because that is already in there. So first thing I note is Oh, we're not done. There's a minus. Minus epsilon naught 
the two will obviously cancel. I get partial with respect of x of e squared. So I would get what? Uh, e x partial with respect to x, e x plus, well, let me do it this way, minus, minus e y partial with respect to x of e y minus e z partial with respect to x of e z. are the terms. Immediately look that this would cancel this. This term is the same as Same as which one? EX. Correct? This term is the same as EX DDZ. Cancel them off. This cancels with that. I cannot completely color code, but I can color code categories. This cancels this, this, and that. Then I have this guy, EY, EX, EY. I'm going to label that 4. And where is 4 here? This one? Then I have uh, 5 is EY partial Y EX. So this is 5. EY partial Y EX. 5. But long story short, it's got a then 6. Is E Z partial Z E X. So this is six. E Z partial Z E X. This is six. Obviously, now the last one, it better come with a minus sign. have remaining magnetic terms, right? I, I didn't put uh, that. But again, on uh, they, they appear very symmetrically on both sides. 
and this is true for the x component, well, then it's true for all components. Again, in, no, in none of these formulation has x component, y component, and z component being picked out differently. It was written very uniformly. So we have this result. So what do we do with this? Well, again, it's going to reveal so many things about the electromagnetic field. But let's just get started. So then the force, total force, yeah, is F, or little f, So then I have divergence dot T D tau minus mu zero epsilon naught. Oh, I can bring out the partial derivative outside the integral, make it a total derivative. to understand uh, how, how to go about doing this stuff. So let's look at, for example, f of x. That's going to be divergence dot x hat. D tau plus oops, minus mu zero non epsilon non t. The x component of s. What I'm trying to do is use the divergence theorem. It's the divergence of a vector. Now, if when viewed this way. So that's equal to this vector but I'm slightly cheating. I'll tell you why. Dot DA. Why did I cheat? Why do you think I cheated? Why would I suggest that I may have cheated? Order, order has changed. Yeah. But T is a symmetric vector. Tij is the same thing as Tji. Please 
Please make sure I don't make a mistake. Right? And let's just compute uh, T x y. Well, we just computed this. This is E x E y. Yep, that's it. What is T y x? The other thing you need to check, well, <laughs> by definition, TXX is TXX with the X's swapped around. It's going to give you the same thing. So it's a symmetric vector. So this, um, um, this stress tensor, you can take the dot product on either side. It gives you the same thing. But now, look, I made this F of So then, I can then write for any component, this is this is true for x, this is true for y, this is true for z, therefore it's true for all components Oops, EDT. This is the total force on charges due to an electromagnetic field. You have to integrate over which volume? Well, the volume that contains all the charges. Any volume that contains all the charges. If you pick a larger volume, that's OK, because there are no charges there. Curiously enough, this doesn't refer to charges at all. We have written it in terms of fields so that we can know what's the momentum contained in the fields, because force is nothing but rate of change of momentum. Remember, we were trying to see how momentum would be conserved. So that's the story behind all of this calculation. So let's do a simple problem and uh, try to understand. Very often, if uh, the, the energy momentum tensor goes to zero infinitely far away, this term will eventually go up. And this is the only one that will dominate. Conversely, if it's a time-independent problem, this will go up, and only this will contribute. OK, so what I want to do is at least give you a, so go through some of the details of a problem worked out in the book, and then we'll do some from the back. And this is example 8.2. force created by the south pole. We don't have the electromagnetic field created by just the south pole. We have the electromagnetic field created by, by the way, this is a solid ball of charge. Okay. So what do you do? Force on this guy. This is a 
solid part of the charge. Now, this is what you do. You know the south pole cannot exert a force on itself. Or sorry, the north pole cannot exert, the, uh, exert a force on itself. So all you need to do is compute the force on the north pole due to the entire ball of charge. You cannot exert a force on yourself in space. How can you move in space Re relative to you? But you have to take the uh, you know, cell phone and throw it away. Or something. So you get some momentum in the opposite direction. So first of all, there's nothing time dependent about this. So this term will not be uh, used at all. This is a DA. There are two terms. This upper hemisphere has this boundary and that boundary. Yeah? But as a matter of fact, I mean, by that I mean the shaded boundary. So there's the bow and the disk. I have to compute. So this is a force that is proportional to the radius. So it's like a spring. You, you dig a hole through Earth and you jump through it, you're going to go simple harmonic motion unless you get damped down somewhere or the other. So this is the inside. And then the boundary is all we need. But the, that comes from the outside. Or you, you can even take the limit. It is the limit as this becomes capital R. It is KQ over R squared, now R hat. Because outside, it is as if it is a point charge. Let's do um, dA um, ball. It is r squared uh, sine theta d theta d phi z hat. Circle coordinates. Our balance will take care of it. Um, it's only half. Yeah, yeah. It'll be zero to pi over two. And uh, what about outer disk? It's a cylinder, so I suppose S D S D phi minus C hat. Look at that. The normal vector. The outward normal, right? It's the minus Z hat direction. Uh, we know this only in Cartesian coordinate system. So let's write down r hat in Cartesian coordinate system. And again, once again, to save space or save time with calculation and error, I have this written out sine theta, sine phi, y hat, and z component is easy. Cosine theta. Okay? So, 
going to do first the bulb calculation. Which way will the force be? Just by the symmetry. Can the south pole exert a force on the north pole in this direction? No. Can it exert in this direction? If it exists, it is in that direction. All I need to do is compute the z component. say F bow. And this is the bow, so you know everything is bow. So that means it is T Z X D A X plus T Z Y D A Y plus T Z Z Correct? Let's compute TZX. What is TZX? There's no magnetic field. Kind of works out. It is just easy EX. Correct? So that's equal to epsilon naught. This is the magnitude, kq over r squared. And I need the z component, which is cosine theta. See, it is kq over r squared, z, z component of r hat, which is cosine theta, cosine theta. Then ex, again, magnitude, kq over r squared, the x component sine theta cosine phi or epsilon naught k q over r squared squared times sine theta cosine theta cosine phi. Then I have T Z Y. Well, it is easy E Y. You can easily guess what's going to happen. The only difference is K Q over R squared. Squared. And I get sine theta. Cosine theta. Sine phi. Because now I need the Y component. Y component is sine. Z. What is TZZ? Epsilon naught E over 2 EZ squared minus EX squared plus. Right? So I get epsilon naught squared over 2. All of these components will have a kq over r squared. So, and it's squared. So again, I get kq over r squared squared. The z component is cosine theta. Cosine squared theta minus x component plus y component squared. So that is sine squared theta, cosine squared phi, plus sine squared theta, sine squared phi. Well, sine squared phi plus cosine squared phi is 1. Yeah? So, one time. 
just do it this way. So I have computed this term, this term, this term. Yeah? Do you know how to compute the DAX, DAY, and DAZ? See? This is the DA. Here I would put sine theta cosine phi. For the y component, I would sine theta sine phi. And the z component, I would put cosine theta cosine phi. So that means, technically, you know how to compute this term. I'm going to skip a little algebra that I would like for you to verify. You must verify. When, when you insert all the terms, into the dot product, you would get that f of z, the bold contribution, is equal to epsilon naught over 2 kq over r squared, not r squared, because this guy has a, the dA has an r squared over there, times 2 pi. 0 to pi over 2 sine theta cosine theta d theta. This is from the d phi integral. And this has a value 1 half, thereby giving you a contribution of 1 over 8 pi epsilon naught. Remember, k is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q squared. We're not done. Yeah? Yeah, when you add up all the trig terms, you know, this one has a complicated cosine squared minus sine squared. But there are other terms as well. And dA has uh, these sine terms as well. It should simplify to just sine theta, cosine theta. In a similar manner, I've given you all the tools, f of z of the disk. It is not a difficult calculation. It's not particularly insightful. It is. Then again, I would like for you to verify kq over r cubed squared 2 pi, now it is 0 to r, s cubed ds. That gives you 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q squared over 16 r squared. Answer now. So total. It's a little bit of a cheat. I'm just adding these two up. I can even write it vectorially. 3k q squared over 16 r squared. So, again, apologies for taking some other 
calculations for granted, but it's good for you to verify that as well. Not, nothing mysterious going on, but please do check the algebra. So if the south pole is exerting this force on the north pole, why doesn't the charge pole just take off? So the corresponding sentence would be is exerting an equal and opposite force on the south pole, thereby the net cancelling the force. Why do we have an all go away in the discount? Over here? The R squared? Oh, okay. Yeah, we had an R squared here. Okay, yeah. yeah. In the, in the disk, it's S, D, S, D, F, mm -hmm. there's no R. Because you're integrating over R, as a matter of fact. Yeah. I mean, over S, going from 0 to 1. Yeah? Please check the math. Let me know.